Are there people in here? Should I lower the camera or is there, is other people like in here that are no, okay, yeah. patrons? Okay, cool. Nice. Oh, it's yeah, nice in here. Are, yeah. Oh, so it's like a smaller strip club. Yes, yes. So it's more of like a post show because we don't really do like strip. It's not like it's a strip club. Oh my god. Area. This is where we do all the changing, the girls getting ready. This is where everything happened. All okay. the chaotic. Wait, oh, when you said when you said we like we changed the back, I was imagining like a parking lot. I wasn't imagining oh, like no, no, this no. nice of a place. Oh, yeah, yeah, this, this is, is a vibe. Right. Yeah. How many girls are gonna be here tonight? Tonight it's gonna be a huge cast. We're gonna have about twenty oh. uh twenty casts. And it's all trans girls. It's all trans. We also have like um um, non-binary we oh, also cool. have cisgender women we have trans we have we pretty much have everybody and you started yeah, this i started this oh my gosh i can't believe i'm here i'm so excited to be here thank you for inviting me to this night and trusting me with meeting all the ladies you have here and hearing your story i really appreciate that of course i'm excited to have have you here it, i'm so nervous are you nervous right now yeah, yeah. Wait, <laughs> you don't seem it you're doing great i know i'm so sorry i'm like nervous i always get so nervous my i start twisting words when I start talking. Don't even worry. I said her all the time and it all gets cut. So don't even worry okay. if you like, if okay. we, you know, if you restart your thought, like it will okay. get cut out. You know okay. what I mean? So don't even stress. There wasn't a lot of safe space for us to kind of showcase our talent. I've heard that, that like for trans strip dancers, strippers, whatever, in general, there's mm -hmm. not a lot of safe clubs because the clubs mm -hmm. are like in sketchy areas or places like yeah. that, right? Most definitely. Why mm -hmm. is it that they're in unsafe areas? Is it because like the people that are coming to it want to be like on the down low or? Yeah, there's a lot of men, I should say, are very down low, like low key about it. They're not so wanting to be public with us trans women. Do you still find like that's still such a stigma where the men not wanting to publicly say they're into trans women oh my god yes all the time i'm not here for these men i'm here for their money and that's all i'm here for but i'm also here because i'm here with my family i'm here i'm here entertaining with my girls i'm performing i i just love performing once i'm on that stage and the lights hits me i'm like everything else i don't matter it don't matter to me we started rough at first and then now we're having uh, this permanent spot here at the north end and it's been pretty amazing I mean, if you're having 20 girls come, there's got to be a clientele for 20 girls. Uh, it, it all depends. It depends on the night. Certain days we have like a pack house. Some night we don't have a pack house. But I still come and do the show regardless if I have a pack house or not. I do it because I love what I do. Oh my gosh, I actually really like it in here. Like, it's like so like swanky. I know. It's even, it, it gets more um, exciting when more people show up. And the lights kind of start dimming. Do a lot of do a lot of guys come to like to watch? Yeah, we do get a lot of uh, we get a lot of uh, loyal clients or loyal. I should say not even clients. I would just say like patrons, patrons, customers, guests, customers. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. We have loyal, loyal customer that come see our show since the beginning, and they've just been coming to us since forever, and they love the show. They just love everyone here. Everyone's just so like. We're just a happy family, pretty much. Yeah. Everyone come here, it's safe. It's safe. They're safe to perform. They're safe. They're, they're in a safe environment. So, yeah. So this, this is, is pretty much our lap dance area. We usually will cover this. So this will come down. So okay, so there's privacy. Yeah, yeah. So there's a little bit of intimacy, a little privacy, you know. So nobody wants to be watched. Yeah, yeah, especially yeah. The, especially our guests. The guys does not want to be watched. They want to be a little bit more seclusive. So we give them a little privacy just back here. And we do dim down the light a little bit just to give them a little intimate. Is this your full-time job or what else do you do to make your money? If you don't mind me asking. Uh, no, yeah. If you, I, if you, if you, yeah, only if you talk about it. I'm an entrepreneur, content creator. I do it all. I'm a working girl, you know? Got, I just do what I do to pay the bills and pay my rent, you know, and... How long have you been a working girl for? I was kind of on and off for a bit because I was in a long-term relationship, but I would say together in total, probably like about four or five years. Do you mind me asking how old you are? I really have no idea. I'm 36. You look amazing. Thank you. So you've been a working girl for four or five years, you said, so you're what, 32 when you started? Yeah, I would say 32. I feel like that's pretty like later on in life for a lot of girls. I pretty late because I was more of a relationship type, like boyfriend and girlfriend kind of thing. I was in a relationship for six years. Should I, should I, 
go into details with that? If you want to. Well, we were together for six years, and uh, it was a rocky relationship because he was an alcoholic, a drug, a drug addict, and um, he would beat me. Um, like no one knows about this because I don't really talk about it. He got me into doing drugs because I was so drawn into our love and just me being with him. Anything that he would tell me, I would do it. We were at a hotel and he got really, really drunk. And then he like came in a room and then he like punched me. He like threw me on the ground, grabbed the pillow and tried to started try to suffocate me. Literally in my mind in that moment, I thought I could have died. I was just like, I swear, I was like, I do not want to fucking die. I need to get myself out of this situation. So I literally like pushed him off of me and kicked him. And I literally ran downstairs to the, um, in the hotel room, started crying hysterically. I went to the front desk and I literally was talking to them and I was just like, I need you to call the police because I my ex boy or my boyfriend tried to kill me. But it, it was stupid of me. I got back with him. Why do you think that is? Blinded by love, especially because he accepted me for being me. I just thought that I couldn't be loved by anybody else. Because of you being trans? Mm -hmm, of me being trans. What got me really more to the point where it was like enough is enough when I found out he cheated. And mind you, it was six years later, <laughs> like six years into a relationship and all the shit that he'd done to me, beat me like really bad. Like I would have bruises for days and like- But the cheating was the thing that was yeah, enough. Cheating was enough for me. I was like, I was done. Cheating was just like, I can't. Which is honestly surprising to me because to me, getting beat is a bigger deal than someone cheating on me. I don't know, maybe <laughs> for me, it's, I don't know what it is. No, no, I think it's like everyone has their own opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, step, for, for me, it's like cheating. It's like a number one no-go for me. It's like, why are you going to cheat? If you're going to cheat, then there's no point of being with. It's true. You know, it's just, it's just, it's just stupid. Stunning. Thank you. <gasps> this is my first outfit of the day. I love it. Actually. I'm here because of you, so thank you so much for hooking that up. I love it here. It's like every like Chinese stomping grounds in LA. No, I love the vibe, and it's like just such a warm, familiar. Right. Like, Everyone aspect. get holds hands. It's that type of shindig. Quite literally, bitch. Hi, honey. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm all right. I'm here. I'm alive. I'm here. Hi, right oh, Matt. There's so many girls here. It's like a party. <laughs> I love it. So many beautiful girls. Oh my gosh. I honestly have no idea like anything about this event. I just know Elle's here and she's my friend and she invited me and I was like, okay. Do you dance in Portland too? Yeah. I, I dance at the Kit Kat Club. Is it specifically for trans girls or? No, I'm the only trans girl that works there. Do they know that you're trans there? Yes. Yeah. And do the guys know you're trans or do you hide that? Um, I mean, they catch on. <laughs> Usually they don't have an, like a deal, like a problem with it because like I'm a good dancer and pretty or whatever. So they kind of just like look past it and pay me for my talent rather than like, oh, who am I tipping that I'm going to like, you know, get with or whatever. It's usually the mindset they go into the strip club with. Does it bring clientele to you because like they're specifically into a trans girl and you're the only trans girl there? Yeah, the chasers definitely be out. <laughs> How do you define a chaser? A chaser is someone that like only specifically looks out for trans women and it's not like a admiration type thing, it's like a fetish for them. So they chase after us because of the fact that we are women with penises. But do you let that happen because it's like they're going to give you money so you're like whatever, chase away? I have to capitalize off that, yeah. As you should. Uh, the only time I would use that thing is for work and only for work. But other than that, like I don't really like be like, oh yeah. I'm gonna use my thing. Well, because like, because because like as a sex worker, if you get the bottom surgery, you lo you lose a lot of your clients. You do, but for me, I'm not a I'm I don't I don't top, I don't. That's not my preference in in my sexual preference. I'm a more of a bottom, and I like it that way, and I keep it that way. I feel more femme in a bottom. It's just my preference. So are you wanting to get bottom surgery as well? Oh, yeah, I want to get my pussy down <laughs> for sure, for sure. That is like not a question to like even think about like if you literally ask me today once you want to get it done I'll be like yeah cut me open right now that's how you feel too right yes and no because like well because I started transitioning so young I don't have as much material to work with and I feel like it's, we're not really in an advanced place because I'm the first generation to like really transition so young like it's been a thing before but it's like a bigger thing now and doctors aren't really accustomed to it so I'm just kind of waiting for the right moment but I'm kind of shooting for 25 just to say like 
just do it, honestly. I'm not like a top or anything. I'm actually a virgin. Oh my god, really? Yeah. How old are you? Tw I just turned 23. And but I'm a slut though, so. Yeah. And I'd be, got, and I'd be with. I am probably I am probably the only um virgin stripper on the planet. So hi. But how are you a slut if you're a virgin? I just have never done anal. It's obviously a choice because you're gorgeous. Thanks. I know. Are you holding out for something or are you? Um, I'm just scared. Like I just have never done it. I don't. And plus, I don't like. Also, dating while trans is so hard. I just don't trust anybody like that. It's not like I'm saving for someone special. I'm saving for someone that can actually I can actually trust. So I'm also really picky, because I won't date a short guy. Grow up. <laughs> you cracked me up. Wait. So how old were you when you started getting hormones? You said you were really young, right? Um, blockers at. 12 and estrogen at 13. I feel like it's a very controversial topic right now, but I, I oh, love- Yes, it is. It is a very controversial topic to say the least. I was the youngest person in my like doctor's office, I'd say, like or like department. I was the youngest person to start on hormones because they wanted me to start estrogen at 16 and keep me on blockers for like four years. And I was like, no, I'm cunt. I need to serve, so give it to me. And your parents were down for it. Well, yeah, my brother's also trans. So it was like, we figured it out. We made it work. Yeah. And are you happy that you started so young? Yeah, I'm gorgeous. That's really the upside of starting young is that you stay, you, you look, look more feminine when you gr mm -hmm. grow up. Because, well, yeah, you because I only had one puberty. Like I didn't go, like I grew up with everybody. Like they actually had my hormones like kind of like lower and got right. Like as I got older, like rose them so that I could grow up with everybody else. So I didn't have like the same trans experience as everybody else. So I'm kind of, I feel like I'm in like a middle ground between like trans people and cis people. But like I'm only considered trans, but like I am a trans woman. I'm proud of that. But like I don't have the same experience as everybody else. So it's kind of hard to like bond with people about like being trans. Our different our experiences were so different. Is it hard for a trans girl to find somewhere to dance? Oh, extremely. Like I don't think I could dance anywhere else in Portland. Like openly trans. I've danced at clubs like undercover, and it, it's just scary and stressful. You should be very careful when you're spreading your legs and stuff like that. That's that's something like, they're gonna see. Some tape on the coochie is not fun. <laughs> so, not. when are you ever scared in the situation when a guy realizes you're trans in the strip club and maybe you're, you're mid lap dance and haven't realized it yet and oh, it's happened to me before and yeah. what happens i mean thankfully i've gotten guys that were like chill about it but like obviously they weren't okay with it but not to the point of like getting physical or you know like outing me to everybody they were pretty respectful about it just like hey this wasn't my type of thing but yeah that's like the really the only experience i've had with that so you're the only cis girl here i feel like dancing right um, I think so, actually. Are you a dancer elsewhere in LA, too? Yeah, I work at a Spearmint Rhino in Van Nuys. I visited once before with Elle when she was working, just to like see her perform and everything. And then they let me come in the back, and I met everyone, and I was like, oh my gosh, I feel so safe. Like, it's not like any other club I've ever been to. People like walk up to you, and they're just like, hey, my name's da-da-da. And that just doesn't even happen at like you know the clubs that I go to, you know? How long have you been dancing for? Um, almost two years. And how did you find yourself getting into the club? I don't know. I just thought I'm super hot, and I'm, I'm really athletic, hey. so I could do it, yeah. I love your energy. You have a very confidence. You have a confidence about you that I really, really love. Thank you. It's different because I didn't grow up a boy really i didn't go through male puberty i didn't go through that your whole experience has really been a woman yeah like when i'm 26 i'll have lived my life longer as a girl than i have a boy That's so interesting and i'm just like so i think you hear so much about like the controversy about that but like is it from actual people that, that went through it and that like started hormones young and so it's really refreshing to hear your story the detransitioners like y'all need to calm down like they're acting like they're trans no you weren't that's why you detransitioned no one asked you to do this you wanted to do this i had to go to therapy for I think a year and a half. And when you're 11, 12 years old, that a year is like 10 years to us now. Reality is they are chasers who wanted to become their fetish and that's why they detransitioned. But no one wants to say that. In my mind, was, I always just thought I was like a woman. So like for me, it's just, I always wanted to get that surgery. So when you, and this is too graphic, let me know, but so when you see your penis, like you just feel like it's not a part of you. Yeah. I've interviewed a lot of trans girls and like, I feel like a lot of them are like embracing their penis and they're like, you know, they call it their sheenus and they love it. And it's a part of them. So it's interesting to hear like your perspectives on it. I call it a pussy stick. I like, honestly, like when guys would hit me up, be like, oh yeah, can I suck your penis? I'm like, what, what, my what? My who? My what? I, I don't, I don't even know what that is. I know what a pussy stick is. <laughs> I know what a pussy stick is. Like these guys will like, they're so comfortable to be like, oh yeah, let me suck your tiny And I'm like, Ugh. I've been through that a million times, even in high school. Because when I was in high school, people thought I had my boobs done. They thought I had like bottom surgery. I was like, I'm 14. But um, I didn't even know what to really call it, honestly. It's just like there. I just kind of ignore it until the boys want to eat it. Do you, are you cool with them? Like, baby, what was I doing two days ago? Getting my shit ate. 
I came three times. Thank you. Okay. I love it. Yeah. Because listen, I only date straight guys, which is also very controversial for no f reason. But, um, and if they don't want to eat it, I'm kind of not down. Cause I'm, I don't trust them. They're not going to f me. Like, unless you're cute enough and I like trust you, you're not going to f me, but like, you can definitely eat me out if I think you're hot. So just don't be like, be like, mm, let me suck you. Suck you Cause I will go home. You don't like any play. No. Because it makes you feel not or, feminine. Yeah, because I've been, like, or they think I'm, like, dominant because of my style, because I'm trans, because I'm tall. They think I'm, like, dominant. And I'm just, like, first of all, I'm a passenger princess because I don't know how to drive. And I'm a pillow princess. And my dad calls me princess. So what's giving Dom? I think my dad and my brother are coming this year. So I'll see them, yeah. Will this be the first time you see them as a transgender woman? Yeah. It's going to be, like, a really cool experience. I feel like yeah. they're going to meet, like, really meet who yeah. you are. Well, I, it's really funny because I don't not to go too deep, but I lost my mom two years ago and I look just like her. So for my dad, it's really weird that his firstborn son looks just like his, like, like I'm representing her. Same nose, everything. I haven't gone FFS because I still want to like keep my face to look like her. The show was about to start and all the ladies huddled together for a final moment before they hit the stage. Seeing all the ladies holding hands, getting ready to make some money together, it truly signified how I felt about my night there. These ladies, they are sisters, and in a world where it seems that so many are actively choosing to not support and embrace them, these girls have each other to lean on. So are we ready for the show? Can you hear some energy? One, two, three, energy! Woo! Every single lady I talked to was just so open and warm and ready to share their stories with me, and it was really an unfiltered education into the lives of these ladies. She organizes it. She's the reason why we have this. My mother. Y'all ready for her? Yeah. Her name is Allie Baby! Yeah. As a trans woman, you want to have that community, a sense of like having sisterhood and a family. Obviously, when I first started my transition, like I didn't have that. There was not that many sisterhood or a, a, a community for us trans women to kind of like come together and like talk and just, you know, just be like a sisterhood. I really love talking with you. I feel like you're such an open book and you make me feel so safe to ask you any question that I want to ask you. And you're so receptive and warm and what you're doing for other girls and like paving a way for them. It's just like really, really beautiful. And I feel you should be so proud of yourself. Oh, I Oh, thank you. I'm actually really proud of myself. Me doing this Baby Dolls Cabaret kind of opened up my eyes, but also opened up the opportunities for everyone to kind of join. We're all about family. We're all about having fun. And that is just... That's how I love doing that. Unfortunately, not long after filming this, their designated night at the North End was no longer. I've put their Instagram in the description box, so if you're interested, you can visit them at their new location. I hope you subscribed, and I will see you next week.